Alrighty, I made my best guess estimate as to where the center was. I don't know if it'll be in balance or not. That's always the fun part. You just gotta spin them up slowly. Sometimes you gotta modify a little bit. I'm sure it'll be a fun start. But I got the cross. This is gonna be the bottom here because it's the widest. Um, I think I could get in and get a nice curved in right in here. Still have a nice foot. Um, so that's kind of my thing. That's where I'm going with. That's what I'm going with. We'll find out if I went with the right idea or not. Shortly. For sure. Who knows? Got her all greased up. Let me lock this in and make sure she's on there tight. Make sure to unlock the machine. That wouldn't be too good. Let's see. Let me get a little tail support here on the back of this thing. See if I've got it to where I'm not going to be smacking it. Going to have a little issue right there. Yeah, gonna have to try to take a little bit off of here and then move this in again. It's a little off center. It's hard to tell, you know. I rounded off the edges with the bandsaw, but and you take measurements and you hope you're close. This one end's a little a little out there. It won't take much to get that off, and we'll better move in and get really close. It's gonna be close. I think I did pretty good. I can tell it's gonna be a little lopsided to this side right here. See what we got. Let's start off at a low speed. Yep, tighten the tailstock down. I don't think that's too hateful. Now we'll get the tailstock up here. I got to get a longer. If I want to be able to reach, and, not, and some of the bigger ones will hit this, this one's going to clear the guide. But in order to get this close enough, you got to be underneath it. Well, that kind of defeats the point if you're going to do something that's 14 or bigger, or around 14. Uh, it's kind of pointless. Can't use the machine if I can't get this under it. So, Monday or Tuesday, I've got a nice long shank uh, tail support there. A little better bearings than what comes with wind, with wind. So, let's see. Right there, that's the closest one. So let's get as close as we possibly can to that. I think we're going to be good. Let me get my shield. We'll get it cranked up. We'll move you guys in a little closer. Hopefully the it won't wander too bad this morning. Once I get it rounded a little bit, it doesn't vibrate as bad and uh, doesn't move the camera around. So whoops can't start yet gotta sharpen okay we're ready to start the adventure let's see what we end up with start off a little slow here i think what i'm going to do instead of it beating me to death here it's just chipping the heck out of it is I'm going to take a measurement and I'm going to go ahead and whack that off with the uh, with the bandsaw because uh, I can go in a good half inch there's no reason to sit here and beat myself up with it when I can just cut that off so let me do that alright I figured I'd bring you guys back when things weren't quite as crazy sometimes when you get these logs that are you know like this odd and different um, they can be a little crazy at the beginning. So I've kind of got it sort of rounded, but you can see it's going to pull pretty bad up in here. I mean, my blade is sharp, but that's that ingrained. Um, I've got some holes in here. I know this cedars, when I took them down, they had ants through the center of it. So this is a crotch log, so um, I wouldn't doubt it. But I think we're going to get beyond it. I don't think it's going to be an issue. Because um, I'm going to go through here, but it might. That's going to be part of the character. 
this is a crotch log I tell you what I can't emphasize more about if you're gonna get this make sure you get a set of, a head shield because uh, these ships and some of the other ones would hurt like crazy smacking you in the face so I think I can get the speed up a little bit more uh, and we can start getting this kind of formed a little bit we'll see If I get, if I get the speed up a little bit, it kind of helps keep the knife. The knife will jump around. Let's stop on the stove. It was my chuck slipping earlier because I had the other chuck on it, but apparently my belt must be uh, stretching or something because it's slipping a lot. So I'm actually going to switch it down to low speed until I get this thing rounded off, and then I'll put it back over on the other speed. It's still variable, but it's it's uh, I can't keep it at speed because it's too much too much mass. So let me switch everything over and I'll be back. It's fighting me a little bit. It's a it's a little bit sappy. Um, tree's been down, but you know when you start cutting pieces smaller, it's not as dry in size. Cedar's always going to be sappy, anyways. Even when it's dry, it's going to have a little bit in it. Um, and all these voids, so it's it's acting up a little bit. So I figured I would spare you the bouncing and craziness. But I'm starting to get somewhere now, so let's see what we can do about getting a little more form to this piece of wood here I'm trying to get the speed up to around a thousand there we go now I can get up there got that void there it's skipping over and it's bouncing over that and catching this uh, bark which I hadn't decided whether I want to leave it or not I think I should just go ahead and take it off because it's it's catching and and I can't get a smooth pass when it's bouncing in and out like that so and there's a big void back here it's doing the same thing but we'll get through that um, I think cleaning up some of this bark off of here will help stop some of that jumping around. Alright. I was able to kind of get it a little smoother. I said I've got a lot of defects and the, the gal just wants to jump down in those, especially when the speed is lower. Um, I can't quite get the speed up yet. It's getting close. Uh, but once I start getting the speed up on the machine, it'll cut a lot smoother. I'm going to work on going ahead and getting this tapered down. Um, I've got, let's see, this little void right here. Um, I like to try to get just, I don't know if I'll get it all the way out, but I like to get the majority of it out. And then maybe those might keep going, I don't know. You just don't know. That's the fun part of doing an odd, weird board. No risk, no reward. Let's get a little bit closer there. Make sure we're free. All right.
It is hard to keep the bevel right on the bevel when it's bouncing around like that. But it is what it is. Still seeing a lot of these defects going inside, but that's character, right? So I think I'm going to try to clean up some of this. I think this is what's giving me a fit over here. And it's uh, throwing me off. So let's see if I can gently get that off of there. Let's see what happens. Okay, now it's starting to kind of behave itself a little better. It's able to get it round. I got that bark off of there. That, I think, helped a lot. This crotch has a lot of sap in it right here. And I think that's just getting all over the tool. You know, it just jerks and doesn't cut as well. You got to sharpen it a lot more. So once I kind of get down through that here, I started forming the top. I don't really know exactly what I'm going to do with it. As far as form, I got these, like I say, these ant intrusions here. So, I mean, it doesn't hurt to have them. They don't hurt anything. Um, so, I haven't decided to, whether to leave this little bit of a valley here. Because it's kind of neat, you know. Um, once you sand it up and get the bark out of there, it looks nice. So, like anything, you start off with a blank. And you just kind of work it out the way you see it work out. So I do like these valleys. You see that in a lot of my work. I kind of like that in a way. Um, I think I'm going to try to bring this in a little bit more right here. I'm going to try to make, I think, a ridge, a cap band right in here. So, and we can keep some of that that way. And of course, we'll keep that. So let's go for that and see what happens. That's not too bad. Of course, a lot of this is going to get changed. I'm just trying to get a feel for where I want this line to be. Then we'll round that off. So, still a lot of sap in there. It's kind of like why I want to get rid of some of this because it's, it's got a lot of sap in it. But I got to change my guide here. When it's bouncing, I can't get the speed up. It's hard to run the. Uh, the gouge because it's just jumping in and out it's hard to get it smooth um, with all these voids so I just use this scraper to kind of do the bulk of the work and then we'll come back and pretty it up with the other let's see if I can get a little bit more speed out of it let's see what we get up to 10 5 5 let's see if we can get up to about 12 That'll help. 12.20. I think that'll help a lot. like the option of having a ring a rim at the bottom so I won't cut that right away uh, see these holes I don't know how far I probably just keep going I'll be chasing a ghost all the way through the end of the wood there so I don't want to worry about those too much it is slicking up it's cutting better um, let's see that thing's pulsating and jump it's hard to get a, a nice slick cut on it 
I think I need to go ahead and do a cut in here and find my line up here. And then we'll go from there. kind of see where I'm looking at and that'll cut in because I get this big hole here stuff will come out of it yep -er. I think we're getting it I'm gonna work on cutting that getting this a little more defined up here and then we'll as far as these holes go we're not gonna worry about them I'm gonna get the design and then we'll figure out what the deal with them is afterwards Now you can kind of see the line I'm trying to get. This will all come out. I'm just trying to establish this right here. They might have that little spot in it. I think I like that. I don't mind a little, little dip here and there. It adds character. And then all that will be cut out. Kind of hoping I can do something similar back here and just have part of this. So I like that. I like that. Let's go back here and work on this back here. Figure out what I'm gonna do back here. So that we can get cut in. Let's see what we got. A little teeny hole there. A bunch of little holes there. But I'm also I'm trying to look at my character of my branches where they came in. I don't want to lose too much of that. And that's absolutely beautiful right there. So I want to be careful. I got two heart, two center hearts here for two branches. That's awesome. So it's a double single three like I thought three hearts 
I say, man, it'd be amazing if I was a fourth branch in there. I still got quite a bit of mess back here. Uh, we're just going to keep taking that down a little bit until I get to something I feel like is a little more solid is going to be more presentable. Plus, I want to get a little bit. I don't want this little cliff right here. It's like a little cliff you can stick your finger under. I want to get rid of that. So let's get this a little closer. Okay. We're going to bring it around here and kind of show. Oops, get my finger out of the way. Kind of show you what I'm dealing with. I got the ant hole, ant hole, ant hole. But I got through that big crater. And I think that's, we're getting really close. I don't want to go too small here. But, you know, it's adding some neat character. And just look at that grain in there. It's going to be pretty. I just got to get it cleaned up. And look at that one. And that one just awesome. It's just I've got to work through and get it cleaned up. I think the basic shape is there. So I'm going to cut straight in here. I want about a half inch, probably three quarters, because I don't want to... So I might start going in with the bowl so this sticks out about three eighths so we'll cut this straight in and start our bowl so that'll be the next thing we do okay starting to get some of this top cleaned up just I couldn't I thought about maybe starting the bowl out here because it's nice to have that feature but with this right here I'd, I'd, I'd miss so much opportunity uh, to keep my bowl larger. I mean, I could follow that inside. Um, I think that'd just be a little far of a reach. Um, so I think I'm just going to go ahead and take it off here and start the actual bowl depth right in here. So we'll go ahead and get this mess out of here and uh, get to working on that. Up to thirteen fifty down. don't want to lose that those uh that look there so I haven't cut all the way in it I can't I don't have a heart to take that off of there I think I'm just going to try to gouge it out I can take it off later uh if I, if I don't like it and I think I'm just going to start the bowl right here because I don't have many with two double rims on top for people and a lot of people like to double rim up there like that sand that out that'll be really nice so let's get to it
getting a little something. Boy, that's some beautiful looking grain inside there. Getting into a little bug eating soft spots, but of course I expected that. Probably not going to worry about getting super thin on the outside. This wood isn't too reactive, so I'm not worried about having it. It's just a potpourri bowl or something like that, knickknack bowl or a knickknack patty whack, give a dog a bone. a little bit of wobbling here seems like it's either got worse than it was so let me double check this make sure this hasn't got off because as you're releasing the pressure inside this can expand it needs to start getting loose so you got to stop and check them every once in a while all right now i can get my rest up in there need to go a little further than that i'll be at least by center Alright, let's get rid of some more mass in here. I got some of that dead growth in there, but that's what you get. using these tools I mean, this is so thick it changes from using other tools and you gotta to keep from digging down you gotta lower the rest down not too bad a, that's a little soft right there but all right let's see right there is some of that we're getting past it though some of that soft stuff we're getting in there and getting past it so I think it's looking pretty good there's a nice little section there of kind of some bug damage but I'm going to start widening it up here once I get that off of there
looks like a, you can't see. Just trying to get it out of your way, but I need it down here to see what I'm doing. And it's still plenty of thickness. There's a little spot right there. Some of that might come through. That one right there. That'd be alright. Man, that grain is just beautiful in there. I gotta watch this over here. I'll, I'll end up trimming that down. I won't leave it thin like that. But we can still go down quite a bit and in a little deeper in here. Make it as big as we can get it. Let's get some support up in there. I still need more. I need to get a longer. I got a 12 inch coming. starting to get something done got in past a lot of that bad stuff I just got to remember I got to be lower quite a bit lower a little bit of stuff there I think it's time to take the gauge which is on the floor seems to fall around there let's get an idea of where we're at Three quarters there, uh, four, a lot there. I can still go in. Let's see, I'm in a quarter. I got about an inch and a half, so a good three quarters more of depth out of it. Easy, and uh, that should make a nice little whatnot bowl, knick knack patty whack. Give a dog a bone bowl be called the dog bowl it'll be a snack bowl that's what it'll be doggy snack bowl let's kind of make this stuff up as I go along
to replace the pad. They do pretty good considering how much you pay for them. They're not bad. Alright, it's time for the sanding sealer. I don't know if putting it on with a rag is better than putting it on with a brush. It seems like this rag is soaking up too much of it. It's not covering it as good as when I've used it. Some people say use a rag, it's easier. But I think just too much of it's soaking up and it's not getting in the woods. In the wood. So switching over to brush. brush works much better. I'm trying to wipe it on with a rag. Lots of character in this wood. Of course it was a crotch log, that's the whole point. It's going to have some really deep dark colors in it. Try to keep my hand out of your way. I'll fill those voids in with silicones. So no big deal. Alrighty. You'll see the rest at the reveal. Alrighty, there's our finished cedar crotch log. We named it Knick Knack Patty Whack Give a Dog a Bone. So it's the dog's bowl for all his treats. Came out really, really nice. A lot, a lot of character in that log few little holes in it which I'll probably fill you can see from the bottom just where some of the ant holes were but I'll fill that with polymer be just as pretty as can be but look at the grain in that wood absolutely beautiful that's where all those branches came together so there we go Nick, knack, patty, whack, give a dog that bone. That's your dog bone, bowl.